What is going on, everybody? Hope you're having a good week. And I just want to thank you for all the views and subscriptions in this past week. I just posted another video yesterday about Bayonetta 3. It's an older video that I chose to delete, but there's a little surprise in there, so check it out. So the Resident Evil 4 remake is getting a lot of publicity, notably so because it's based on a straight up masterpiece. But there was recently an interesting conversation between a journalist and Resident Evil 4 Remake's director. And he actually said Resident Evil 4 Remake didn't need to happen and he didn't want to do it. He openly admitted that there wasn't a lot to fix about the game because he considered it a masterpiece. And I'm sure he's inspired by Resident Evil 4 whenever he makes an over-the-shoulder style game like Resident Evil 2 Remake. But it is interesting that he straight up said he didn't want to do the remake because he considered it a masterpiece so he didn't see how he could make it better. But there was a great deal of additions that he's adding to the game to kind of supplement the experience and make it a lot faster. As they said, they're going to crank it up to 11. And he's starting with fleshing out Leon and other characters by putting a little bit more lore around the world. And that's exactly what I wanted, for you to find more about what Leon has been up to instead of watching like a CGI movie to find out. And hopefully more backstory in Ashley Graham, because I didn't really feel connected to her at all during the original game, or Ada for that matter. So there will be more to explore and find regarding the Resident Evil lore, which is awesome. I'm glad that they're going to include that addition. It would be pretty awesome to find out more about Krauser, because up until Darkseid Chronicles, we didn't exactly know how Krauser and Leon met. And if some of you didn't play Darkseid Chronicles, little bit of spoiler, they meet on Mission Javier. But the director goes on to say that he didn't think QTEs would be appreciated as much today because of how modern gaming kind of flows naturally. And you can see that with the cutscenes, how they zoom into the character's face and see all the detail. Then they just zoom out and it seamlessly goes into the gameplay. So they don't want to break away from that constant immersion with QTEs. And I understand that. Some people don't appreciate that they're not going to add the QTEs. And they see that as nostalgia kind of being erased. But that's exactly what it is. It's just nostalgia. It doesn't really supplement too much in the game. I'm assuming those sections like running away from the giant stone robot, which is most likely going to be in the game, regardless of what other people are saying. I'm assuming that section is going to be fully interactive and you could probably have different ways of running away from it. Maybe there's going to be branching paths and you have to take the right one. So there is still most likely going to be some form of interactivity in those moments. And I can't wait to see that because Resident Evil 2 Remake had that constant immersion. It didn't have one shot takes or anything like that. But for the most part, you were fully in control of Leon and Claire during that game. And of course, as everyone saw in the gameplay, they're adding a parry mechanic so you can wait at the right time and parry enemy attacks. The only worry I have about the parry system, which I'm not sure if I said it yet, I just don't want the parry system to be overpowered. I want the timing window to be very small to the point that it's easy to miss. I don't want it to be too easy like Callisto Protocol, nowhere near that. <laughs> But I don't want the parry system to be the end-all be-all to combat because I am assuming that potentially you're going to use the parry system with Krauser and actually have a knife fight with him. And it would be pretty awesome if the parry system is dynamic and the way you parry each enemy is different. So if you parry Krauser, you would do a different animation or a different maneuver than you would with the chainsaw guy, Salazar. How long have you been at Kamataji, Mr. Doctor? And it's interesting, the director actually thinks the original is better off with the parry system, so maybe the parry system isn't overpowered, which is a good thing. I'm assuming that it flows well with the gameplay, it seemed like it did, and I have no doubt that the director generally wants to have a good time with all the gameplay mechanics on the forefront, parry system, shooting, running, apparently he has a stomp as well. So there's a plethora of additional mechanics in Resident Evil 4 Remake. I kind of make it special and most likely it'll feel different enough that you can go side by side with both games and maybe wish the original had some of the systems that the remake has. And just like the director, as I said in the last video, I didn't think Resident Evil 4 needed a remake, but I'm not going to lie, it would be pretty badass if we get to parry Krauser a few times. And in some instances, Resident Evil 4 original did have a dodge mechanic sort of, with its QTE segments while you're fighting Krauser with a knife in Professional, or dodging boulders as they fall. So I wonder if they're going to add a kind of dodge mechanic like Resident Evil 4 had, especially in that sewer level with Sadler's right-hand man, as they call him. Would be a shame if you can't do backflips away from that guy, because I don't know what I'm going to do if I can't. Because I don't know what I'm going to do if it doesn't. 
And there's another interesting update. They're actually adding a weapon called the Bolt Thrower, and it's said to be a silent weapon, so you can better use it in stealth sections. But the Bolt Thrower just reminds me of the Evil Within, so more so than ever, this game is going to remind me of the Evil Within than a Resident Evil game. But I'm assuming the Bolt Thrower is going to be a great silent weapon. And I'm still wondering how those stealth sections are going to work with this game. Because consistently, Resident Evil 4 was just an action game going into a horror game. So if the director wants to keep a lot of it with the same beats, the tone at least is going to get cut in half if you have the option of sneaking past every enemy. And I can't imagine how terrifying it's going to be to sneak past the regenerator. I'm assuming that's like the main reason why they added that stealth mechanic into the game because just imagine crawling through the lab trying to avoid the regenerator while you hear his hissing echoing through the halls oh hell no I can't even imagine how incredibly scary that's going to be. Have that with a boot of modern graphics and you got some deeply disturbing nightmare fuel. I tell you what, I'm going to bolt the crap out of them if they even look at me. Oh, day, son. I can't wait to see how the regenerators are going to look. And yes, I am looking forward to this game because it is a Resident Evil game. I love all Resident Evil games. I'm just slightly worried that it won't feel as good as the original because they are changing a decent amount. But you know what? I'll just completely accept it. And I think the Resident Evil 4 remake is a good thing because it's going to lead to other remakes like Code Veronica, which I cannot wait to see. Steve turning into that monster with modern graphics. That's my favorite moment out of any Resident Evil game. But I'll probably make a video on that later on. But regarding the pacing of the game, I think Resident Evil 2 remake has perfect pacing and it is truly infinitely replayable. And an interesting thing, the director actually wanted it to be infinitely replayable. The same director going into Resident Evil 4 remake wants the same thing for this game. He wants the player to go back a hundred times and still enjoy the game almost as much as they did the first time. Now, the first time in Resident Evil 2 remake, I sort of enjoyed it less than, say, the 10th time because I was so terrified of Mr. X. There was a part where I was just sitting there hearing the 3D audio of Mr. X searching the RPD station for me. No, 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 no. It was terrifying. So the 10th time playing, I wasn't as scared it was a little more enjoyable because I wasn't completely hysterical like I was the first time. And I heard that the ink ribbons were in hardcore mode. So unfortunately, I was playing in hardcore my first time, which was a bad idea. But also, it's one of the most memorable experiences I've had with a survival horror game. And I'm hoping the regenerator sections and the right-hand man sections in Resident Evil 4 Remake are as memorable as Mr. X was. Hopefully, they add more big cheese sections as well. But it is pretty cool that the director actually wants it to be infinitely replayable and that makes me want to play the game even more. It's going to be quite possibly the best Resident Evil game. Considering all that Resident Evil 2 Remake was missing was the kind of intense action moments that Resident Evil 4 had, just for like one scene. But the way Capcom thought about Resident Evil was basically how each Resident Evil ended and the kind of tone it had and rhythm you had by the end of the game, where it was 20 times more fast-paced than it was when you started. And so the next Resident Evil after that started just as fast-paced as the ending of its predecessor. So it is going to be interesting to see Resident Evil 4 Remake optionally take a backseat to the action with its stealth scenes sort of mimicking The Last of Us in a way, but in my opinion, nothing is going to be better than The Last of Us's stealth sections. Last of Us stealth is perfect. I actually think at certain points, The Last of Us has better stealth than most Metal Gear games. For The Last of Us Part 1 to be coming at the same week as Resident Evil 4 Remake is like a birthday present, and I hope the PC port is well optimized so I can play that and Resident Evil 4 Remake on the Steam Deck. Cross my fingers. And the last comment from the director that really stood out to me is how he wants to retain the essence of the original Resident Evil 4, but not only that, he wants to retain the pacing and the length of the game. So it's going to be 15 to 20 hours just like the original. And that just alleviates most of the worries that a lot of people had about cut content. But of course, I still have some doubts that they're going to include everything, like separate ways, assignment ADA, the mercenaries and all the characters. Because of inflation, the game's going to be $70. And if Capcom decides to add some DLC to it, I'd see that coming a mile away. So for them to say we're retaining the game's length 15 to 20 hours, that's not counting the mercenary levels or the extra storyline with ADA, I'm assuming. So they're still sort of beating around the bush in terms of if they're going to add all the extra content. 
content. I'm sure they are going to add most of it and they want it to be a surprise, but if they're even missing a little bit of what the original had, fans are going to riot, which is funny because that's another thing that the director said. And since he said that, maybe they are going to add mercenaries mode in separate ways and even assignment Ada. But yeah, if this game is anything like Resident Evil 2 Remake, I'm gonna love it. That's my all-time favorite survival horror game and just game. And the voice actor of Leon's making a return. But the voice actor of Ada is not making a return, so that's gonna be a little weird to hear a different voice on her. But as long as the interactions are fleshed out and appropriate between them, unlike the original... Got some business to take care of. See you later. Women. Am I right or am I right or am I right? I think I'll be okay with the change in Ada's voice in such a short time. Maybe she's just doing something else, I guess. Or they wanted a more seasoned sounding voice actor. Not sure. Interesting thing in the movie Resident Evil Retribution, Ada Wong was actually voiceovered by the original Ada voice actor from Resident Evil 2 1998. When I originally watched the movie, I thought she did sound a little weird and her voice wasn't matching her lips. But finding out that the original Ada voice actor made a cameo in a live action movie is pretty awesome. I'm not sure why they don't just have her make another return. Or even Sally Cahill from Resident Evil 4. I believe the original voice actor's name is Lee Bingbing, which is kind of funny. I am not making that up. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this update from the director and what he thinks about the game. How does that change how you think about the game? Because I'm actually more reassured since the development team had to fully grasp what they were getting into. It just shows that they drew a line and they made their own standards for this remake to surpass the original or to supplement the original's gameplay even more, which in my opinion would make it better by default. So I am really hoping that somehow Dev Team 1 can do the impossible and make Resident Evil 4 Remake even better than the original. If I can somehow experience Resident Evil 4 for the first time again, aside from VR, then it's a 10 out of 10 experience for me. A lot of the characters do look slightly different, but I sure hope the feeling of each character is the same like in the original. And they stay true to some of the cheesiness in the original as well. I don't want this game to be too serious. If they could add some cheesy lines to it, then I would be the happiest fanboy. But yeah. I'm stoked for this remake, and it seems like it's in good hands. And once again, let me know what you guys think about this. Are you going to play this game day one? Or are you going to wait for a review? Where do you stand with the Resident Evil 4 remake? And notice I didn't mention the rain once in this video. Ah, forget it. And I hope you guys have a good one. Later.